Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to find the local minimum and the local maximum of this cubic curve right here by utilizing the vertex formula of a cubic curve that we derived it last time, right? If you haven't seen how we come up with this formula, you can check the video that's in the description, okay? And do notice that this right here looks really similar to the good old quadratic formula, but it's not. This is the vertex formula for a cubic equation, okay? So, all we need is we have the ABC values, which you can just draw them in. Notice that the D value doesn't matter in this formula because at the end here, if you have a different D value, all you are doing is just to bring the curve either up or down. But the X value of the vertices will just stay the same, right? And those vertices are exactly the local minimum or the local maximum if there's any in the first place. All right, enough talking. Let's go ahead and plug in the numbers into the formula and get to work, right? So x is equal to negative b, which is negative 9. So let's go ahead and put that down right here. And then we have the plus minus. We open the square root. And then b squared, which we have negative 9. And then square that, minus 3, right? And then we have the a, which is 1. And the c value is 15. Okay, and then all over 3 times a, 3 times 1 then, right? And then of course, let's just go ahead and work this out. So we see we will have positive 9, and that's going to be a plus minus, and let's open the square root. Okay, let's do this in our head. Negative 9 squared, we get 81, and then 3 times 1 times 15, that's 45. 81 minus 45, it's going to give us 36 in the square root. And then we still divide this by 3 times 1, which is 3. And now we have two x values from here because the inside is a positive number. So let's go ahead and break this down. The first x value is when we have 9 plus square root of 36, that's just a 6, right? And then divided by 3. Okay, we can work this out real quick. You see, 9 plus 6 is 15, over 5 is just, I mean, over 3 is just 5. And the other one, we have x is equal to 9 minus square root of 36, which is 6, and over 3. And on the top, we have 3. On the bottom, we have 3. So this is going to be 1. As you can see, we have two x values. Now, let's go ahead and decide if this is going to be a local minimum or local maximum, and vice versa. All we have to do is to check this expression where you have this for the x value, right? Okay, so this is a second derivative. You are going to see if you get positive or negative second derivative, or maybe sometimes zero. Anyway, x is equal to find this situation, plugging 5 in here. So we will have 6, right? So this is y double prime, which is equal to 6 times a, which is 1. And the x value is 5, right? We are trying to check what kind of minimum or maximum that we have. And then plus 2 times b. b is negative 9, so 2 times negative 9 like this. OK, let's work this out real quick. So this is y double prime. This is 30 minus 18. That's 12. And that's positive 12. Notice the second derivative is positive. That means the function at x is equal to 5, it's concave upward. So we will have a local minimum, right? So right here, we will have a local minimum at x equals to 5, OK? Now let's check this one. But you know already this is going to be a local maximum, but let's still do the work, right? So let's go ahead and write down y double prime is equal to 6 times 1. The x value here is also 1, and then we put on plus. 2 times negative 9 for the that formula, that expression. And then y double prime in this case, this is 6 minus 18, which is negative 12, and this is negative. So in this case, negative second derivative means that the function is concave down. That will give us a local maximum, right? So let me write this down. We will have a local maximum at x is equal to 1, OK? So this is pretty much the main part. And now let's also make a sketch for this curve, all right? And in order to make the graph pretty, of course, let's 
you know, come with the x and y value. So here we go. Let's go ahead and maybe make a quick table or something if you would like. But let me just do this right here real quick. When x is equal to, let's do one first. We know y would be, well, I want to get y value. So I'm plugging 1 into the original equation. Therefore, we'll get 1 to the third power minus 9 times 1 squared plus 15 times 1 plus 4. And this right here is going to give us positive 11, okay, once you do the computation. And then on the other hand, when x is equal to 5, let's go ahead and plug that in for y. y will be 5 to a third power minus 9 times 5 squared plus 15 times 5 plus 4. This is going to give us negative 21, all right? Now we can just go ahead and do the graph. So let's go ahead and put down uh, our x-axis and the y-axis like this. And of course, my picture is not going to be perfect, but just excuse my picture, all right? Anyway, let's go ahead and put down 1 and 5, maybe like this and like that, okay? Okay, when x is equal to 1, the y value is 11. And let me just say, here is my 11. And when x is equal to 5, y is negative 21. And let me just put this down right here. This is negative 21. And we have these two points. So we have this right here and this right here. And you know, this right here, it's going to be a local maximum at x is equal to 1. And likewise, this is going to be a local minimum, right? OK, of course, if you would like to have more points, you can just go ahead and plug in more x value into the original equation. And I'll do one more point. I will plug in when x is equal to 0, because that's super easy. Plugging x is equal to 0, we get y is equal to 4. So let's go ahead and do that. And let me just say 4 is right here. And now, let's go ahead and connect the dots. The curve will start right here, because I have to go up, hit this point, and hit that point, right? And then come back down. So let's go ahead and do that. Starting down here, goes up, hit this point, hit that point, and stops. And we have to go back down like this. And then we have to hit this point for the local minimum. But once we hit this point, the function doesn't go down anymore. You have to make sure you turn back up because this is going to be a concave up situation when x is equal to 5. You have a local minimum, right? So you have to just go ahead and do this. Okay? So this is pretty much how the curve will look like. And you see, this right here is what we call, what well, I call a vertex formula of a cubic curve. And hopefully you guys like these videos, right? Uh, I have part one, part two, and part three, and this examples right here. And you see, I want to make these kind of things algebra student friendly, right? So this is what I call the algebra student friendly calculus videos. And let me know in the comment section to see uh, what you guys think about this. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And thank you to all my viewers for all your support. But at the moment, this is it.